Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit in Hanover. Um, I'd like to invite anyone who's standing, feel, feel free to take a seat. There's plenty of space up in front if you'd like to and enjoy a drink on the house. Um, well, we enter our afternoon of fuel cells and their components. So our first presentation under this topic is the latest developments on bipolar plates for fuel cells and electrolyzers. And we have here today uh, Dr. Thorsten Hickman, who is the CEO of Eisenhut. So I'd like everyone to uh, join me while we give him a warm welcome. Yeah, um, very good afternoon. Um, yes, I just want to give you a small overview of uh, the new issues uh, which we have for our product. Uh, first of all, uh, our product range I just want to uh, overline. So we have three uh, products lines, mold making business. The first one, the second one is production of small and medium volume for uh, plastic, rubber and silicone parts and the third one, that's the one we're looking at, it's bipolar plates for fuel cell and batteries and electrolyzers and also a little bit uh, and therefore this is uh, marked in this case a little bit around the gasket technology. Okay, um, supply chain, so we have a kind deep production area uh, we can give you the design, uh, the production and the analysis and also uh, for, the <coughs> for, the, um, uh, uh, for the department of uh, bipolar plates for graphite and so on we have the compounding, the injection molding and uh, uh, gluing and gasket technology. But uh, in order to have a good product I mean, this is uh, standard uh, knowledge, but nevertheless, I just want to keep an eye on it. To order to have a good product, we need three things. The one thing is the material, the second thing is the process, and the third thing is the design. And only then, we have a good product. So if we, we have to keep in mind all the three different things in order to get the best out of it. For the first row is the material area. Um, yeah, it is like making a cake. You know that uh, the recipes uh, which are necessary in order to make the bipolar plates or the graphite compound, um, they consist of different materials such as uh, plastic polymer, just as uh, graphite, just as, um, such as carbon and all mixed together make a good, a good basis for the next step and uh, the right mixture is necessary and that's the reason uh, why we have this development for several years now in our company in order to have customized material. So if you say uh, I have this in this application and I want to have this in this uh, material then we can help with the right uh, material line and always keep in mind a good cost structure, a good processing structure and uh, of course, a good electrical and, in some cases, also terminal conductivity. For the process, uh, this is a similar issue. We have to look at uh, all different areas, such as compounding, as I mentioned just uh, some seconds ago. Then the next step is the milling area. So uh, if you only need uh, some samples, we can mill it. Or uh, for higher volume, we can go to uh, mold to size or to injection molding. So again, uh, if you uh, have a certain uh, application and you also have a certain perspective how much plates and how much products you will have to need in the near future, in the next year or in the next two years, then we can uh, choose together the right technology for you and uh, starting with maybe a lower level of technology it is better with a cost structure because then uh, you have a lower startup invest and later on once the product is running uh, you we can scale up together that means we can put additional uh, invest to uh, certain issues in order to get a good uh, cost structure and it is also very necessary to look at the very beginning also at the uh, component integration so that means is it necessary to get into gaskets or can we integrate it on a bipolar plate or whatever we can do in this case. Gasket, 
is uh, indeed one of the big issues, one of the big challenges, not only in the fuel cell business, but also in other business. Here's the same, here's the same question again. How, want, how do I want to do it? That means, do I want to do it in dispensing with a very simple technology, but there you have, on the other hand, some restrictions in the design? Or do you want to go on injection molding uh, integration either on a metal bipolar plate or a graphite bipolar plate or separate or integrated on a gas diffusion layer or on a membrane unit. At the end of the day you have to look at the whole product again, look what to do in order to good, uh, have a good gasket solution which is also cost effective and then take the right choice. And uh, the first step I said about the material, the second was now the process, as I mentioned, and now the third step is also the design. So uh, you know that about 70% of the cost of is uh, determined in the design, and once you step from one technology to the next technology, it is very important that you also have in mind that there are some changes necessary. We need, uh, for instance, when we have a bipolar plate which is milled, so we can have vertical uh, structure. But once you step into injection molding or compression molding, you have a kind of demolding ang angle. So then you have to redesign also your fl flow field structures. We, in this case, we have some design recommendations uh, which we discuss with our customers together or potential customers in order to get a good way uh, and to keep on going in this field. So, this is the first thing and then the next thing is that it really makes sense in order to get, uh, to get on running also for new product launches to start at a very early stage with molding. So we recommend our customers uh, already at about two to three hundred plates this is almost nothing because you may need, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 plates per stack. So you're talking about 5 to 10 stacks uh, in order to step into the injection or compression molding period. And at this time, we also have to discuss about the tolerances. Yes, because uh, with milling, we uh, are able to realize very good tolerances, very small tolerances, but once we go to injection or compression molds, the tolerances will increase. And this means that you have to also to look again at your structure, at your design, and at your gasket concept in order to realize it. But at the end of the day, you get a plate which is much cheaper than do it by uh, standard machining. And uh, injection molding, the next step would be then the final step in order to go into high volume production and there you also have a high potential of uh, automatization in order to bring again the cost down. So I now I want to show some, uh, uh, some examples. This was a small fuel cell system in order to demonstrate. The bipolar plate is on the right side on the corner. It is injection molded. Uh, we also have components for Redox flow system. At this point I do not want to step into this technology. But uh, later on, you can also look at uh, our booth or uh, um, also at this presentation. So it is mainly working like a fuel cell stack, but uh, with liquids which are pumped through the stack in order to get uh, charging or decharging uh, as a reality. And in this, we have also, uh, you see in the middle of this uh, uh, picture, we have integrated component with gasket, with the outside frame, with the uh, cover which is uh, welded on it. And well, the, in the internal you need a kind of felt, carbon felt. This is not our, uh, one of our product range. You just add it afterwards. And if you do this, you have uh, four or five part component, which is the only counterpart to the membrane. So the stacking of the system is very easy. And also the, the contacting, you see this uh, ears on the side, the contacting of this stack is also very easy because you only have to uh, put a, a screw or whatever on it and then, then you can uh, use the small stack or bigger stack already as a full system. And the contact issues, the contact resistivity uh, or contact 
Conductivity is a very big issue in the fuel cell business and also in the redox flow business. And uh, one of the later de latest developments is a titanium-based plate. That means that we <coughs> make a, a compound again also for customer requirements where uh, not graphite is uh, the most uh, uh, used uh, ingredient but rather than the titanium powder. And here we have two big uh, advantages. We can use the technologies such as injection molding or compression molding on the one hand with its very good cost structures and secondly we uh, have this compound mixture which is already uh, gas perm uh, impermeable and um, also a better cost structure than having a pure titanium plate. So this is mostly used for PEM electrolyzers or can be used and uh, yeah, we're stepping in the first applications in there. Uh, just a small remark, this is also a new product uh, where we look at. Uh, so far we have talking about uh, electrochemical uh, applications such as fuel cells or redox flow batteries. But uh, there are also some customers who need a very good thermal conductivity, not electrical but thermal. And in this case we have also the development for heat exchangers which are in an aggressive atmosphere. And there we can make components which have a very thermal conductivity uh, outstanding features in order to realize what to do there. So this uh, again is one of the issues where we can give you a, a good solution to it. And um, concerning uh, the fuel cell technology we have worked in a, uh, in a public funded project in order to uh, develop a biofuel cell, a biological fuel cell this is uh, going to be installed on a wastewater uh, plant. It is already installed there and it is working in the end. The idea is not to produce only electricity on the one hand, but also in order to produce clear water. Because uh, once you start pumping this uh, uh, wastewater through the stack, uh, it is cleaned at the same time and electricity is produced. So we have a double effect. The electricity is, uh, is on a fairly low level, but there is electricity and then uh, at the same time the water can be cleaned. And as you might know, the wastewater plants are very big energy uh, user because they need to clean the water and they need a lot of energy in order to realize it. And the idea is uh, to, uh, to uh, accelerate it. And for this product we got the German uh, the Sustainability Award together with the University of Clausthal and some other partners. And maybe you are interested in having a further discussion with us, so we are also in our booth. Or maybe also in this discussion now. And um, last project is uh, also in order to get a better heating system and better velocity on it. It's also a public funded project we are working with at the moment. Yeah. Thank you very much and I would be very happy if you have some questions for me. Thank you very much, Dr. Hickman. So um, as he mentioned, if we have any questions at the moment, I can bring the microphone down to you so that everyone can hear. No need to be shy. This is a great opportunity to have uh, ask some questions right now. Um, but if we don't have anything that uh, is a burning question right at this moment, please feel free to visit Dr. Hickman at his booth, which is D53. Um, so you guys can continue on the discussion there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I'd like to invite all of you to remain um, or join if you'd like to. We have another exciting presentation coming up in this afternoon of fuel cells and their components. Uh, so next will be oil-free turbo compressor systems for fuel cells. So stick around if this sounds like an interesting topic. <laughs>